Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today I'm covering Gallery Girls, season one, the only season, episode three, Wild Child. You guys, I have had so much fun rewatching this. I hope you're enjoying it too. It's so much fun to go back over this stuff. Uh, so, like I mentioned every time, I found this on the Amazon app. I think I paid $12 for the season. But uh, I believe you can find it for free on YouTube. You might have to just search for it or find it in pieces, but you should be able to find it. Hey guys, I just want to take a second and say if you're enjoying this show, please check out my Patreon. Go to patreon.com, search Real Housewives Recaps, or check the comments below and I'll put a link. And for a dollar a week, you can support my show and get four bonus episodes per month. I'm covering Scary Island. Like, the greatest season of Real Housewives in New York. So, check it out. Thanks so much. So, this one starts out at the Eli Klein Fine Art. So, if you remember, it's Maggie and Liz that are there. Maggie is saying, Eli and I went for drinks the other night, and he was actually nice to me. But now that we're back at work, he's back to treating me bad. And this one's hard. I don't know if it's just Maggie not wanting to do the work or not wanting to be the intern or if Eli really does treat her it does seem like he's kind of a shit to her a little bit so Eli is asking Maggie to put the same amount of pebbles in each bonsai they he wants them to each have the exact same number of pebbles she has to dig in the dirt for these little pebbles and make them exactly the same it's really ridiculous uh and Liz says what did you have her do and Eli says count the pebbles and he then says, better her than you, right? Now remember, Liz says that she will tell her very rich father if she's unhappy and Eli will be in trouble because her dad's a huge collector. That just sticks with me. So Eli asks Liz if she wants to grab dinner across the street. So they leave Maggie behind to do this menial task while they're off eating dinner. So Liz says, I feel bad about leaving Maggie to count the pebbles, but they still go. They go have food. Uh, Maggie has no idea that they've gone, and it's just a weird scene. I find Eli a little bit creepy. He comes off kind of slimy in this. He seems to have a thing for Maggie. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I just get a creeper vibe from him. Then we go over to End of Century. You guys, this is my favorite subplot of this whole show. We got Ethan Cook, this artist, is here. They've decided to take down the other paintings that they had because they weren't selling, so they've got to sell some art. And Ethan is like an abstract, minimalist painter. Chantal says, Ethan's work is mind-boggling. I don't get it. It's all just kind of... It's just... She's hoping it'll be quick and easy and that they can make some sales and just be done with it. So, Claudia actually bothered me a little bit this episode. I like Claudia. I think she's probably the most level-headed of the three girls. But she's very wishy-washy. I mean, she's 22 years old or 24 years old. So, I get it. No offense to you guys. But um, I was probably that way too. But uh, she's very wishy-washy. She can't make up her mind, which is not a great feature in a business owner. So, she couldn't make up her mind about how much to charge the guy and how much profit that the store would take versus how much the artist would take and Chantal is saying I was a little taken aback I thought they had already discussed this this is not typically how it's done we go over to Liz's apartment in Gramercy Liz is cooking lobster with her mom Anne so we find out that her parents have divorced remember her dad's the rich art collector um she said she used to be really close with her dad but then at 19 she took up doing cocaine every night. She was going to South Beach. She started stealing. She ended up having to go to rehab. She's cleaned up her life now. She's saying her mom has always been so sweet and loving and there for her. Her dad, not so much. She says that he wanted nothing to do with all that. And, and she's been trying to win his approval back ever since. It's kind of heartbreaking. So then we're at Angela's apartment in Williamsburg. Of course, she's living in Brooklyn. She's been living there for about three years. She's a waitress. That's how she pays her bills. Um, she does freelance photography, and she says that pays as well. And she has her best friend, who's also her neighbor, Alex, over. 
So she's been invited to this Creators Project Arts, it's a creative event in Dumbo, hired to, um, to photograph the event. She's hired by Paper Magazine to take pictures of the event. So then we see Amy and Carrie. So they're at this Upper East Side Uptown Art Fair. The, all the major artists and dealers are selling work to clients and to art advisors. So we meet, of course, we know their boss, Sharon. She has brought along this guy, Jordan Schnitzer. He's a philanthropist and a collector. Sharon gives them a task and says, okay, Amy and Carrie, walk around the fair and pick one work of art that catches your eye. It will give her a better understanding of, of each of the girls, and she wants to see how their decision-making is. She wants to see what kind of art that they would pick out, because Sharon's job is to help pick art for these rich buyers. So it's interesting to see the process. We see um, this is the art that Carrie ultimately chooses. She takes her time. She talks to the artist. She wants to learn the stories. Versus Amy, who says... I have an edge on Carrie because I've been to an art fair. I'm not even sure that Carrie's been to one. Then she says, boring, boring, boring out loud. She says, I'm going to find something and I'm going to find it quick because I do have plans later. So back at the Creators Project in Brooklyn, Aaron, or Angela meets up with Chantal and her boyfriend. Claudia also meets them there. Uh, Angela is the photographer for the event on behalf of Paper Magazine. She's explained that it pays well and it gets her into cold parties, but it's not intellectually stimulating. She really just wants to shoot photos of her friends and parties, and she eventually wants to put together a show and legitimize herself. So we'll get into that as well, because we're going to see what her idea for that is. Then we go over to Upper East Side. It's this bar called Dorian's. Amy says she loves it. It's like cheers. Every time she walks in, she sees everybody she knows. So we see Maggie arriving with her boyfriend. And Maggie says, I like Dorian's. It's full of normal people. I'm not sure that they'd let anyone from Brooklyn through the doors. Maggie is such a snob. Maggie then says, Amy begged me to bring my friend Eric. She thinks he's really cute. We see Amy is completely hammered. Uh, Maggie says that they seemed a little drunk uh, when everybody got there because they arrived a little late. Amy's completely drunk and making a fool of herself. Amy's telling Eric that he's gorgeous and kissing him on the cheek and being super flirty and it's so awkward. <laughs> So she tells Maggie, hey, let's go to the bathroom. So Maggie goes in, and Amy is yelling, like, he's the nicest guy in the world. Maggie doesn't know what to say. So she's like, yeah, he has a great apartment. Well, Amy goes, I'm not that type of girl. Do you know who I am? Maggie says, not really. Amy says, I could care less where he lives, what he does, or how much money he makes. I come from a really good family. So when I tell you he makes a lot of money... And he, so when you tell me he makes a lot of money and lives in a good place, and Maggie the camera says, what the fuck? You're a hot mess, except for not hot. Woo, damn girl. Maggie's telling her boyfriend she wants to get out of there. Then we see Amy telling this guy, are you really drinking Michelob Light? I am like, you're the love of my life. Then we go to the School of Visual Arts over in Gramercy. It's Liz. She's a student there. When she's not working at the gallery, she's at school. She wanted to be the artist, an artist from the age of three. So it's interesting to see. We see her taking this class. They're doing this project. She's working on it. So just when you start to feel sorry for her and she's like, you think, okay, you know, she's trying. She's trying to overcome this past of drug addiction and all this. She says things like, if you're a good-looking, smart girl with a family that comes from uh, money, people hate you. No, I'm pretty sure they hate you because your personality sucks. So then we see Carrie. She's on her way to go meet Sharon. Uh, Amy's supposed to be there too, but of course she's running late. And we'll find out why later. We'll talk about that. But Carrie's there, and here comes Amy, and 
Amy has Kim Zolciak hair, like, totally. But uh, Sharon wants to see what art they've picked out. So it's time for them to show the art from the art fair, just so Sharon can gauge their taste, their sensibilities, see if they're taking it seriously, <laughs> Amy. Uh, so Carrie volunteers to go first. So Carrie shows this piece to Sharon, and Sharon loves it. And Carrie says, well, first I was drawn to the pretty colors, but then it was the story from the artist and the artist travels that really drew her in. So Sharon loves this. She loves the reason she picked it. She loves everything about it. Well, it's Amy's turn to go. And Amy has just picked the most famous artist that she could find there. Sharon is not impressed. And Amy to camera says, Carrie got lucky because she picked the piece that Sharon actually likes. And Sharon says she... Wants the piece that somebody really is going to become obsessed with, not just because it's an artist you already know. She encourages them to go out and look at as much art as they can and try to, you know, pick out interesting art, that sort of thing. And back to my favorite hot mess store, End of Century. Chantal is meeting with her jewelry person. Chantal to camera says, Claudia hasn't sold one piece of art. Instead of nagging how to fix it, I'd like to do something to fix it. So I'm putting on a trunk show for a designer, Nettie Kent, tomorrow night. The presented items will be for sale. Uh, so they talk about all the stuff that this lady can bring in for them to sell at this trunk show. Chantal does actually seem like she's trying to make the business work. She says things like, I'm embarrassed for Claudia. She didn't think of anything like this. Well, aren't you partners in the business? Don't you both want it to succeed? Uh, then we go over to Lori's East Side. Angela is on this date. She's been set up by her next door neighbor, her best friend, that guy that was over earlier to meet a photographer. And this guy is so creepy and so dorky. And I'm not the biggest fan of Angela, but what's happening here? Angela says she always had a fantasy of meeting a middle-aged man in a midlife crisis. And um, when she finds out he doesn't have a cool phone or use digital uh, photography, she's not interested. You guys, this is one of the funniest parts of this entire episode. We see this like clip package where it goes back and forth between Carrie and Amy. They are obviously putting the two of them up against each other. They're showing what a hard worker Carrie is. She's a lifestyle manager working for wealthy clients. And she does that when she's not interning. So she has a full-time job plus an intern. Then we go over to Amy. Amy announces that she gets her hair done four times a week. And then she says, this is New York. The music is slower for Amy. Everything's just different in her scenes. Back to Carrie. She's saying the work is 24-7. It's constant. It's nonstop. Show her working. And then back to Amy. Getting her hair done. Oh my goodness, she says, I like the California blonde look, and we see all this. And I think, you get your hair done four times a week, and yet it still looks like Kim Zolciak? Anyway, it's just funny. It's funny because they're clearly pitting these two against each other. I guess they're roughly the same age, and Carrie's busting her, you know what, to try to make ends meet and really work hard and have a good career, and Amy's just hanging out. So we go over to Liz at her apartment in Gramercy. She's very nervous because she's meeting her dad for dinner. She's explaining that he lives in Miami and she just doesn't get to see him often. And he seems, like, grumpy. I mean, she explains that he's distant and has been distant ever since the drug and the rehab thing. There's so much pressure for her to earn back his trust. And Liz is... You know, she's trying to tell him what's going on in her life. She's mad because she found out these two classes she has to take on top of the other classes. So it's going to put her, I guess, finishing later than she planned. And Dad just kind of says, where's the issue? She tries to make conversation about a vacation. He's not into it. It's just, he's just not really interested in her life. We go back to Angela's apartment in Brooklyn. She wants to exhibit her photography and get it out there. So she's got these friends who come over to try to help her. It's Ben and her neighbor slash best friend, Alex. 
They're trying to help her establish herself as a photographer and it girl. That's what she says. She wants the event to make her buzzworthy. Alex is trying to help her secure a venue and use contacts. She wants him to get the right people there. Ben's telling her that she can do better. She's trying to show them their photography and she only has like a couple photos taken. And Ben keeps saying, you got to do more. You got to do better. This is your chance. She shows off like this photograph right here and it's cool. But I mean, I think both the points, they're trying to make the point of you got to work harder. You got to do more. This is, if you're going to take this shot, you really got to have more work up. So she's like, oh yeah, I guess so. We're back to end of century. It's a designer trunk show. And there's a DJ there, lots of people. Carrie's bringing Amy to the event. Sharon really wants them to get out and see artists, so she's decided to bring her. Carrie says, I'm going to take the Upper East Side girl downtown to where I live. And obviously Amy is just not comfortable by any of it. So Chantal has this epiphany. She says, uh, tonight I had the epiphany to set up a sales station. How did you not think of that before at a retail space? So Laura is taking payments. And she said, I don't know why it took us so long to figure it out. Oh my gosh. How, what in the world? I wish they'd show how much money they made from this event. Because it did look like she had quite a few people at the till. But I'm just very curious as to how much they made. Because before we learned that they needed to make about $7,000 a month. Uh, in order to be okay. Then we go over to Liz's apartment. Her bo her boyfriend Bobby is over. He's helping her hang art up on the wall because that makes her happy. He seems sweet. He's She says he's very supportive of her. He's shown her a lot of love that she hasn't gotten from her dad or any other male figure. Get creepy creeper sends Eli Klein's fine art. Uh, they have Maggie stuffing envelopes. And this lady, Jane Holzer, comes in. We find out that her that Liz's dad knows all these people because he's such a big art buyer. So Jane was Andy Warhol's muse. And that's pretty cool. So we get to see old pictures of her and Andy hanging out. It's pretty cool. So she's come to look around and not buy anything, but take a look. And Liz says, I feel bad for Maggie. She's just having to sit in there. And stuff envelopes. So we see Jane walking around. Liz is showing her around. Eli's kissing her ass. And Maggie's just in that little office. So Jane makes a point to go by and say hi. And uh, and so Maggie meets her. And, and afterwards she's just pissed. Maggie is pissed. She's like this isn't right. Uh, I can't stand him for another second. I just can't. I can't deal with him. Because he put her in the office to stuff envelopes. This is hard. She's an intern. So yeah, she probably has to do grunt work. But yeah, he kind of orders her around in front of Maggie. And that was, I mean, in front of the Jane lady. And that, that wasn't very cool. Then we see a flash to next time. This guy is saying that he has an Asian fetish. And Angela hits him. Uh, and then... It's Maggie's birthday. It's her first one with her boyfriend, Ryan. He seems drunk and she's pissed. And then we see Angela does not have a venue for her photography exhibit that she was trying to set up. She's arguing with her friend over that. Then we see Amy fighting with Liz. And Liz is calling her fake. And Amy seems completely shocked by this. So I will be watching and I can't wait to see... What happens there, Amy? Uh, anyway, so that is it for the episode, you guys. It was such a good one. It's another good one. Loving this. I wish there were more than eight episodes. I wish there were more seasons. Love going back over this. So much fun. I hope you're enjoying it, too. Thanks so much for watching. Leave me comments. I love the comments. I read them all. Uh, they all help me out. Thank you for that. Uh, leave me comments at on my Twitter, at Real Recaps. And thank you guys so much for watching. Tell your friends about me. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye-bye.